Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. In this episode, Dr. Mark Lovewall will share some highlights and clinical pearls regarding the treatment of psoriasis with biologics. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Lovewall. My pleasure. Dr. Lovewall, can you elaborate on the different classes of biologics currently indicated for the treatment of psoriasis? So there are um, four classes currently. Uh, the oldest are the TNF alpha blockers. That includes uh, etanercept, adalimumab, infliximab, and sertilizumab pegol. Um, there's also a, uh, a drug approved for psoriatic arthritis called golimumab. All of those are TNF blockers. Um, the next class of drugs to be approved for psoriasis was uh, used to kinumab uh, and IL-1223 blocker. Uh, and after that, we had IL-17 blockers. Um, and in that class are uh, three drugs, uh, ixekizumab and secukinumab. They're IL-17A blockers. They directly attack the cytokine. Um, Bradalumab blocks the receptor for all of the IL-17s. Uh, on the surface of the keratinocyte. So that so uh, that is also an IL-17 blocker. And coming soon will be uh, a bimekizumab, which blocks IL-17A and IL-17F. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have the most recently approved class for uh, psoriasis are the IL-23 blockers. And those include uh, guselkimab, tildrakizumab, and rizankizumab, uh, so three drugs. And uh, coming soon will be mirikizumab. So we have quite a large number of drugs, biologics approved for the treatment of psoriasis. Thank you. What are some of the most promising therapies that will likely be a part of the psoriasis treatment table in the near future? So um, the one uh, uh, biologic I already mentioned is uh, bimikizumab, and that should be coming, you know, hopefully by next summer. Uh, that blocks IL-17 A and F and shows degrees of efficacy heretofore unreported, both for psoriasis and for psoriatic arthritis. So um, that's a, a dramatic treatment that is coming. Um, Mirakizumab is coming too, very effective IL-23 blocker. Also on the horizon are non-biologic smaller molecules called JAK inhibitors. Uh, and one that we are really looking forward to is uh, Ducrabacitinib. Um, it's a uh, TIC2, tyrosine kinase 2 inhibitor that appears to have a very good safety profile and yet gives the kind of efficacy we're used to seeing with some of the biologics. Do you foresee that they will also be approved for pediatric psoriasis patients or only for the adult population? Well, I think the usual pattern has been that they get, are approved first in adults and then end up being used in uh, pediatrics. Some of the drugs have an advantage in that they also have other indications which affect children, for example, uh, pediatric Crohn's disease or uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. So many of the TNF blockers, um, some of them aren't even approved for, for, uh, for pediatrics and psoriasis, but are approved for other pediatric indications. Now the IL-17s and IL-23s so far, actually ixekizumab is approved for pediatrics. I anticipate some of the others will follow that path and be approved as well. Now, one of the nice things about the biologics is they're so targeted that they're quite safe. Uh, you know, we, we actually know what to expect in terms of their safety profile because they block a very limited number of cytokines. And there are even examples in nature where those cytokines don't exist. So for example, people born without IL-17 or with deficiencies in IL-17 or mutations in the receptor, get chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. They get yeast infections and they get bad yeast infections, not what we see with our patients because we're not completely getting rid of IL-17, we're just partially blocking it. So, you know, we know what to expect in terms of side effects for some of these. And of course the concern when you're dealing with a child is they're gonna be on this drug potentially for decades. What is the side effect profile gonna be? And, and we know that for some of these drugs. So I think for sure they're safe enough to end up pursuing pediatric approval. And I, you know, I do expect that many of them will go that route. Thank you. Where do you feel biologics fit in with other approved treatments for psoriasis or overall in the treatment regimen? You know, because of their safety, we have seen a steady growth 
in the use of biologics for psoriasis. And I expect that will continue. Uh, many of the older molecules that we use, cyclosporin, methotrexate, acetretin, have a lot of side effects. And, um, and with the biologics, they're very targeted, so we know that we're gonna see fewer side effects. Uh, and that's why they grow. The dilemma is they're very expensive to make. A plant to make biologics costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so they're quite expensive and they're a challenge to the healthcare system because of their costs. And final question, can you tell us what you feel is still needed in terms of developing new treatments for psoriasis? Um, there's still a lot of room for improvement. So if you look at, for example, ASCII 100 scores, a patient being completely clear, um, to date, we do not have an approved drug where the majority of patients achieve past C100. So even in this very effective class of drugs, we still need more efficacy. We need much more efficacy in psoriatic arthritis. Um, and for both of those reasons, I think that we will see um, additional biologics and additional oral therapies. There is a complete void right now in the topical therapy market, which has not kept pace with the systemic therapy market, but we now have new classes of drugs coming. Um, we have JAK inhibitors, we have roflumilast, which is a phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor, and it's coming as a cream, and we have um, Tepinarov, another topical therapy. So, uh, so I think that um, the topical therapy market will catch up as well, but there's still a lot of room for improvement there. The oral therapy, the, the drug that is most promising on the horizon is ducravacitinib. And as I said earlier, because it's so effective, if we get other drugs that prove to be safe and highly effective in the oral space, there will be many patients who want to go an oral route rather than an injectable route. Um, and the proof in the pudding there is apremolast, which is a drug that has been very useful because it's so safe uh, that it's literally, it has the mechanism of action of caffeine. So we don't have to do any monitoring at all for it. Um, and even though it's a lot less effective than uh, the biologics that we use, it's gotten a large share of the market. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lebwolf, for sharing your insights with us today. We truly appreciate you and your time. You're very welcome. My pleasure.